guys, this is Ivy from Wampley here to be able to show you how to fill out the second round of the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Lendio to hopefully make things a little bit easier. The focus on this particular video is going to be on getting the second draw of the Paycheck Protection Program loan in addition of it being it specifically geared towards non-employer businesses. So things like independent contractors, sole proprietors, etc. So first things first, you're going to end up on a page that looks just like mine where it's going to ask you to enter in the name of the business where I'm acting as an independent contractor in this particular case. I'm going to enter in my first and last legal name as the name of the business itself. First name, last name, email address, and phone number. After you filled out all of these pieces of information, go ahead and click apply now. It takes a couple of seconds, but then you get redirected to a page that looks just like mine where it's going to ask you to be able to create a password. Now, remember, this is going to be your password that you're going to use to be able to access your account later so that you can check on the status of your application, etc. Please make sure it's a password that you'll remember and that it's an email address that you can access. Go ahead and press continue once you have that password in. After that, it says that it's getting questions. Let's get you started on the right path. Are you applying for your second PPP loan? In our particular case, for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and click yes. Then it's going to ask you for your 10-digit PPP SBA loan. If you don't know what that is, it's going to, uh, you should have received that when your loan was approved by the SBA. So let's go ahead and enter that here. After that, we're going to enter in the uh, funded amount that we received on our Paycheck Protection Program loan last time. And then we're going to go ahead and press Next. After that, it says we're going to get some questions. So it asks for the business name, the address, Go ahead, make sure that you click that from the drop down in order to be able to continue with your application, otherwise you will run into uh, complications later. DBA, if you do have a doing business as name, this is the name that you put on your sign or your letterhead. Your business start date, when did you actually start the business itself. Your business type, so that could be you know sole proprietor, partnership, independent contractor, LLC. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and click independent contractor. And then it's going to ask for my social security number. That way we can try to be able to enter in this information to the best of our ability. As always, any and all information that I actually show you guys in this application is falsified for the sake of the application itself. So we've entered in our social. Then it's going to ask for our industry. This is going to be the equivalent of your NAICS code. Use general terms such as restaurant instead of coffee shop when typing. So I'm going to type in marketing. And mine is the first. It's marketing consulting services. After I've clicked on that, that's going to ask for the total number of employees, and it's one because we're an independent contractor. After that, it's going to ask for the average monthly payroll. This is the total amount that you're typically paying month over month when it comes to your payroll expenses. So we're going to take that number. We're going to add that directly in here. Then it's going to give me the total amount for my, uh, my PPP loan right here which is 14.5. That's this number times 2.5. Makes doing the math super easy. After that, it says you stated that 5800 for your average monthly payroll. What year did you use to calculate? Use 2019. So that's going to be your best bet. If you have filled out your 2020 taxes, go ahead and click on 2020 instead. After that, it's going to ask for the loan purposes. This is anything and everything you're planning on using this Paycheck Protection Program loan for in the future. So that could be your payroll costs, rent and mortgage interest, utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage, covered supplier costs, covered worker protection expenditures, or other. After you fill that everything to the best of your ability, go ahead and click Next. Give it a couple of seconds, and it's going to redirect you to the next page where it has you calculate your revenue reduction. Because the SBA requires at least a 25% re revenue reduction for the second trial eligibility. So, your 29, uh, let's go ahead and enter in the gross receipts for each quarter. If you don't know what that is, go ahead and hover your mouse over this little question mark. It gives you the total income that you received during the time period. So let's go ahead and enter that in to the best of our ability. This is how much money we made. Then the total gross receipts for each quarter last year. As you can see, it calculated the reduction in revenue of 50%. That way it's got it based on the total gross receipts for each quarter in 2019 versus 2020, so they can see the total amount of reduction that you have over time. After that, then it's going to ask you to enter in your expenses for each quarter. 
to any and all business expenses, please go ahead and make sure that you enter those directly for both 2019 and 2020 according to your tax documentation. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out those boxes super quick. So we've got that filled out. Everything's ready to go. After that, you have this little box right here that you need to click before you can continue. It says, in accordance with Lendia's e-signature agreement, by checking this box, I verified that the information I provided is accurate and could be supported by valid documentation. Go ahead and click next after everything's been filled out on the page. Give it a couple of seconds, and now it's going to give you business questions. So we're going to hit yes or no next to every single one of the questions on the application starting at the top and working our way down. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in, in this transaction by any federal department? In our case, no. Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA that has caused a loss to the government? No. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? No. Is the applicant or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant presently incarcerated for any felony, presently subject to indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction? No. Within the last five years, for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or false statement in a loan application or any application for federal financial assistance, or within the last year, for any other felony has the applicant, if an individual or any owner of the applicant, been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nolo contendere, or been placed on any form of parole? No. Is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees? Or it's just me? Yes. Is this applicant a franchise that's listed in the SBA's franchise directory? In my case, no. And is this applicant a franchise? I'm going to go ahead and click no and click next. After that, it's going to take you into your owner information. It's going to say, has the ownership of the business changed since the first draw PPP? This means, you know, if you had changed businesses, if you sold your business in any way, shape, form, or capacity. In our case, we're going to go ahead and click no, and then it's going to ask us to sign our full legal name to be able to certify that the ownership has remained the same. After that, go ahead and click next. Then it's going to give you a little couple more questions. Do you or any individual own 20% or more of the business or partnership? Yes. What is your percentage of ownership in the in the business itself? Again, it's an individual contractor, it's an independent contractor, it's 100%, so we press next. Give it a couple of seconds, and now we're going to enter in all of our documentation. This is going to be identification for all owners, payroll, rep payroll reports, and business tax documents. Let's go ahead and click next and continue. So first, it's going to ask for your driver's license front and back, or any other government-issued ID. For instance, if you have a state ID, well, you can use that. It just has to be front, back, full color, and we need to see all the edges. Can't be blurry. So let's go ahead. Let's browse files. Let's go right here to my documents, driver's license, open, browse files, again, one more time, driver's license, open, got this in the system, then it's going to ask for your voided check, that way you can use a check for the business bank account, the account number must, make the, uh, must match the bank statements, if you have the opportunity to do this, do this we strongly recommend it, so I'm going to go ahead and click that, I have mine labeled as a blank check to make it super easy. Now that I verified that I have my front of my driver's license, back of my driver's license, and my voided check, we click next. Give it a couple of seconds, then it's going to ask me business type details. Do you have W-2 employees? Where I'm an independent contractor, no, we do not. This would be the same answer if you're a sole proprietor, if you're um, an individual contributor of some kind, or if you work for yourself. If you do not file W-2s to be able to give to your employees, please do not click that you have W-2 employees. Go ahead and click next. After that, give it a couple of seconds, and it's going to ask you to add in all the supported file types. It's going to ask for your full 2019 tax return. That's every single one of your documents. Please make sure that you have every single page. So you're going to browse your files. I condensed mine for the sake of this to make it super, super easy. That way I can make it really easy as far as putting it into the system for a demonstration for you guys. Got my PPP corporate tax return right here. Once you've entered in your entire full tax return, go ahead and press next. Give it a couple of seconds. And that's going to ask you for additional documents. 
Etsy, they're going to ask for a February 2020 business bank statement or a customer invoice from 2020. It's basically to be able to prove that you were in fact in business last year. So we're going to click where it says browse files. We're going to go to my section that says bank statements and I have bank statement of February 2020 right here ready to go. So again, I'm going to scroll down, make sure that it has in fact uploaded into the system and press next. After that, it asks for your demographic information. So it'll ask for your position. For instance, I'm an independent contractor, your veteran status, your gender, your race, and your ethnicity. Please make sure that you fill these out to the best of your ability or go ahead and click skip in order to be able to move forward in the rest of the application. After that, it's going to ask you to sign and consent. So by clicking the boxes and clicking these yes boxes, completing the form and signing below, you make the following representations. That the, applica uh, the applicant was in operation on February 15th, 2020 and has not permanently closed and was either an eligible self-employed individual, independent contractor, or sole proprietorship with no employees or had employees for whom it paid salaries. Yes. Current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary. Yes. The applicant has realized a reduction in gross receipts in excess of 25%. Yes. The applicant has received a first draw paycheck protection program loan and before the second paycheck protection program loan is disbursed will have used the full loan amount. Yes. The funds used to retain workers and maintain payroll or make payments for mortgage interest, rent, utilities, covered operations, expenditures, covered property damage costs, covered supplier costs, and covered worker protection expenditures as specified under the Paycheck Protection Program rules. I understand that the funds are knowingly used for unauthorized purposes. The federal government may hold being legally liable. Yes. I understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, covered utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage costs, covered supplier costs, and covered worker protection costs, and not more than 40% of the forgiven amount may be used for non-payroll costs. Yes. The applicant has not and will not receive another second draw pay check protection program loan. Yes. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operator grant. Yes. The president, vice president, head of the executive department, or member of Congress, or the spouse of such person as determined under applicable common law, does not directly hold a controlling interest in the applicant. Yes. The applicant is not an issuer, the securities of which are listed on the exchange registered as a national securities exchange. Yes. The applicant is not a business concern or entity for which an entity created in or organized under the laws of the People's Republic of China. Yes. The applicant is not required to submit a registration statement under Section 2 of the Foreign Agents Registration Act. Yes. The applicant has, uh, uh, the applicant is not a business concern or either primarily engaged in political or lobbying activities. Yes. You further certify that the information provided in the application and the information provided in all supporting documents and forms is true and accurate in all material respects. That you understand that knowingly making a false statement to obtain a guaranteed loan from the SBA is punishable underneath the law. Yes, and you acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using required documents submitted, and you understand, acknowledge, and agree that the lender can share any and all tax information that you have provided with the SBA's authorized representatives, including the authorized representatives of the SBA's office. Yes. After you click every single yes box, now it's going to ask for your applicant authorization. So it's going to ask for your first and middle names, your last name, your birthday. So let's go ahead and enter that directly into the system. Your gender, your social security number we already filled out, your home address. Go ahead and put that directly into the system. Now, with this, here's the fun thing. Make sure, again, that you click it from the drop-down menu to make sure that it does, in fact, register in the system. The other portion, if your home address is the same as your business address, it will ask you to reconfirm, just making sure that it does, in fact, have the correct information. After that, it asks for your applicant title, which is independent contractor. After that, you're going to make a couple more certifications. We're going to click this box that says, I certify that. You've read all the statements, including the statements required by law. The applicant is eligible to receive a loan under the rules in effect at the same time that this application is being submitted, that the applicant together with its affiliates is an independent contractor, self-employed individual, sole proprietor with no employees, employs no more than 300 employees, etc. All loan proceeds will only be used for business-related purposes as specified in the loan application, that you understand that the SBA encourages the purchase to an extent feasible of American-made products, products and equipment, 
for applicants or individuals, you authorize that the SBA to request criminal record information about me from the criminal justice agencies for the purpose of determining my eligibility as amended. You have read and received the Paycheck Protection Program disclosures, and by submitting, you agree to Lendio's electronic record and signature agreement. After that, go ahead and click I acknowledge and accept the terms of the loan application. Click sign and submit. Like I mentioned before, if your home address and your business address are the same, it will flag it and say, hey, we noticed that you listed your business and home address as the same. Please verify that this is accurate. Make sure that these are in fact accurate and click confirm and submit. After that, it takes only a couple of seconds and it says, success, we are reviewing your application. At this point in time, this is actually going to be your application dashboard where you're going to be able to check the status of your SBA loan every step of the way. Now, what's going to happen from here is you're actually going to receive direct correspondence from this particular lender via email in case they have questions, comments, concerns, or need any other additional information from you directly. However, if you do run into any questions about your account, filling out your information, go ahead and reach out to us. Thanks!